So Siri have added the newest 24mm f2.8 anamorphic lens to their lineup, including the 35 f1.8 and the 50 f1.8. But the Pocket 2 has an anamorphic lens by Freewell. I mean, look at the size of this. Zoom in right now. Yeah, that is so small, but can the Freewell version on the Pocket 2 be compared to Siri's anamorphic lens, the 24mm f2.8 on the brand new Sony FX3, which is a cinema camera. So yeah, spoiler alert, you need these lenses right here. So Ciro came out with their third anamorphic lens, the 24mm f2.8. It is slightly bigger than the last two versions as you can see right here. It also has a 72mm front filter thread as well uh, compared to the two 67mm filter thread. And it has a focus throw of 180 degrees. That is really good when you wanna do some nice accurate focus pulls. Uh, now it weighs a total of 810 grams, so it is a little bit heavier than these. Wait, is it? How much? How heavy is the 35? This is the 24, this is the 35, and obviously these are the weights on there. So now this one currently sells for 999 US. On the other hand, the Freewell anamorphic lens is only 39.99 US for your Pocket One and your Pocket Two. Now I know a lot of my followers or subscribers have the Pocket One and or Pocket Two, so you might have already got this one. And I'm not sure if a lot of my followers have these ones, so you know I'd really love your input. Comment below if you do have the Freewell version on the Pocket 2, comment below if you have the Sire version, either one, 50, 35, or 24, let me know what you have. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into the image quality and see if you can actually pick which one is which. So can you pick which one is which? I mean, there is a pretty big difference between the FX3 and the Pocket 2, uh, but you know, it still produces a really good image quality, the Freewell, but you can't complain. This wide angle view is just incredible. If you do pair it with 35 and 50, you're gonna have really good anamorphic lenses. The 50 is pretty much one of my favorites because on the full frame, it's about a 70 to 75 mil which I absolutely love. The 35 mil gives you approximately about a 48 to 52-ish. Depends on obviously your camera and what your crop sensor is as well. Uh, but these are built for APS-C cameras um, in terms of the focal length, but you can put it on full frame if you do have it in crop mode or clear image zoom if you're on the Sony cameras. I generally put it on 1.4 clear image zoom, which gives me however many millimeters, I'm not 100% sure, but um, I still can use it on my a7S III as well, but I used it on the FX3 before I had to send it back. Sad times, had, had to send it back. Damn it, that's all right. 
So overall, the 24 mil is a great addition to the lineup, uh, but and it doesn't produce as much blue lens flares as these two, which I think a lot of people actually did ask because the blue lens flares, some people just don't really like them and it was actually a bit too much. Uh, but yeah, this one is a little bit softer, which is good. In terms of field of view, you might want to be using this, uh, I suppose, more of an establishing shot. So more wider shots, especially being anamorphic, you're gonna get much wider field of view than your standard spherical lenses. So just as a comparison, I put the 28 to 75 Tamron lens on the Sony a7S III, and I also compared this with the 24 millimeter anamorphic lens. I did put it in full frame mode, and then I also did it in 1.5 crop. Now you can see the anamorphic lens does have a more of a warmer tone to it. The Kelvin was set at 5400 Kelvin in both lenses. And you could see the difference between the two lenses in terms of white balance. Now I did shoot a short documentary with these three lenses and I don't know if you've heard of HMB, historical medieval battle. Wait, one sec, one sec. You think medieval battle, you're thinking, I know what you're thinking. This he slay me. He doth not slay the king. You wouldn't even hear when it happened. It's not that. It is definitely not that. This is insane. You're seeing footage right now of medieval battle. This is incredible. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can see this. I will drop this on my main channel uh, because of, you know, I've got a whole bunch of viewers that may actually want to see this, but it is shot all with my anamorphic lenses. So you really, really need to get onto this. So to convert the footage, all you need to do is right click on the footage, go up to modify, interpret footage, then go down to conform to with pixel aspect ratio and all the way down to HD anamorphic 1.33. So if you are putting this into a 4K timeline or a 1080 timeline, you'll probably find that the scale will be at 100%. You're gonna need to change the scale to 75%. And then you can see the footage is in the correct aspect ratio within your timeline. So here's what the Cire 24mm anamorphic lens looks like at nighttime. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. That would be absolutely amazing. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you already haven't. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.